Hello, welcome back. Mr. 13 here with another Spore Vehicle Spotlight. Today we have Artillery. And first off, I'm not the author of any of these creations. The names of the makers are under the names of the vehicles. It's much to the credit of those that made them that each creation was the best I could find of its kind. And um, Artillery. Well, basically artillery means gun, but specifically artillery is long range, uh, let's say large caliber guns, okay, big guns, and used in warfare on land. I just wanted to specify for anyone who's unfamiliar with the term artillery, artillery can also refer to special units in armed services that use the big guns and we have a mixture today of both current and formerly used artillery and most of the vehicles that I've been doing in my spotlights are vehicles that are in current use but for these purposes on this episode today I've made a mixture of both first off this here is the M4 half track which it itself is not an artillery piece. This is basically an APC, as you've seen in my last video, if you watched it. An APC is an armored personnel carrier. But being a half-track truck, this truck is also often used to pull, ar pull artillery pieces. Um, basically, the M4 half-truck is an armored vehicle used by the United States and its allies. Um, and here it is towing a 57 millimeter anti-tank gun. Um, now, this gun, 57mm anti, excuse me, anti-tank gun, is a semi-automatic gun with a rate of fire that can reach 25 rounds per minute. And it's, it's basically lost its effectiveness and lost it by the mid-1950s due to tank armor protection improving. So obviously this is a period piece uh, model, um, likely um, Cold War, since it lost its effectiveness in the 1950s, but I imagine also it may have seen some service in late World War II. Next, we have the 88 millimeter field gun. This one, you can see the um, gun itself on a carriage and here are shells and one shell in particular which I imagine is ready for loading into the chamber and the 88 millimeter field gun was in service from 1936 to 45 it was a German anti-aircraft and anti-tank artillery gun and was actually one of the most recognized German weapons of World War II so obviously not in service anymore as it was 36 to 45 but quite famous in its era next up is the M114 howitzer and now it says here um, 39 caliber weapon system um, from the research that I did, um, we have a 155 millimeter howitzer, so I'm not exactly sure. Uh, it does it does actually say up here modifactor of modification, I imagine, of a 155 millimeter into a 39 caliber weapon system. But specifically, the 155mm howitzer was first produced in 1942 as a medium artillery piece. Now, there are many countries worldwide that have operated this, um, from Afghanistan to Yugoslavia, I mean, A to Y, a lot of countries. And it's still actually in use by armed forces of many nations. And you can see here it has a carriage and uh, pretty sure this is where you would actually hook it up to the vehicle. This, these back uh, do flashies. I don't know. Uh, whatever you would call these. 
uh, I can't think of the term. Now we're going to move from the basically towed artillery into what is called self-propelled artillery, starting off with the M109 howitzer. Now this is an American-made self-propelled 155 millimeter howitzer, first produced or first introduced rather in the 1960s. The primary weapon is, of course, the 155 millimeter howitzer and has secondary armament, armament which could be a 50 cal machine gun, a 40 millimeter automatic grenade launcher, or a 7.62 millimeter M60, or an M240 machine gun. So having the big gun be a um, 155 it's also supported by other weapons including a 50 cal which in itself is a very powerful weapon. I've actually had a chance to fire a 50 cal and it's pretty impressive if you're getting a hold of that gun and shooting it. It's actually fun. Uh, now this particular piece here has been upgraded many times into today which is the M109 A6 Paladin and I, you, maybe some of you are familiar with the Paladin and at first glance you might see this and think oh well you know it looks like a tank and yeah it does it bears a lot of similarity to a tank especially some of the ones I've featured in a recent video but to break it down basically you have tanks APCs and artillery self-propelled specifically and they all do have their own similar features but in, in essence armored personnel carriers or APCs they're armored obviously from the name but they're, they're basically designed to carry troops or soldiers or people or whatever it may be and they don't typically APCs don't typically have um, large weapon systems they may have um, defensive weapons or anti-personnel weapons, um, even up to a 50 cal or whatnot, but typically don't have the firepower of, say, a tank or an artillery piece, uh, sulfur belt. Now, tanks, although they look like uh, some of these artillery, like this one specifically, tanks have better armament at the expense of maybe shooting cap capabilities whether it be aiming or firing their design tanks are more designed to actually be able to take a beating and they'll be right there on the front lines now what you have with the self-propelled artillery is as big a gun as you can get on tank treads so they uh, will sacrifice uh, the capacity to carry troops of the APCs and some of the armament capability of a tank and have as, as big and potent as a weapon as you can and don't always have a frontline mission. They can be um, quite a ways back from the front line and actually do their work that they're assigned to do, uh, firing at very long, long, large ranges or whatnot. Next up, I'd like to show the Hummel 15 centimeter howitzer, and I imagine that would as well be a 150 millimeter howitzer. Now, this was produced by Germany during World War II. So, like I said, some of these aren't actually in production anymore. This one is not. And it was produced between 1942 and 1945, so during World War II, Nazi Germany was using this. Today, Five Hummels survive in French and German museums, as well as one in the Patton Museum of Cavalry and Armor in Fort Knox, Kentucky. So this one is very strange looking. Um, I, I'm pretty sure the actual um, Hummel in real life has a very uh, strange characteristic look like this does, but maybe not quite so much. I'm not sure about all this going on up here. Um, and like I've said before in, in the tank episode, the tank treads are all wrong from what they probably should be. But the gun itself is, is very similar with the like three-piece setup here and a lot of the shapes, basic design of it. Um, next we have a... where is it? 
Okay, I believe it's this one. This is the M, you can see it here, M1128 mobile gun system. They're calling it the Striker, striker mobile gun system, and that may Striker may be the actual producer, um, or distributor, or what have you, of the 1128 mobile gun system. And it's an eight-wheeled, have the eight wheels here, eight-wheeled armored fighting vehicle mounting a 105 millimeter tank gun. It's in the service of the United States Army and it's a lighter, more air mobile alternative to tanks. So with with this kind of uh, artillery piece, you start to get a good picture of the difference. Whereas the M109 looks so much like a tank, it's hard to tell. This one, you, you start to see more of the difference. And you might think, oh, well, it's got a smaller gun than a tank. Well, if you consider the fact that a tank is a turret and then has a gun on the end of it, this actually looks much more like this is just the body of a tank with a big old gun on top of it. And the caliber, like I said, is uh, 105 millimeter. But I imagine this um, artillery could stay quite a ways away from the front lines and with the right uh, crew, team, whatever, um, artillery people working with it, could probably hit a target from very, very far away. Um, very formidable weapon. And lastly, we go to, and I'm going to struggle with this name, the Panzer Hobbites, or PZH-2000, and this is a German 155mm self-propelled howitzer, first designed in 1996. And it's actually one of the most powerful conventional artillery systems currently deployed. So yeah, these are out there right now. It is one of the most powerful. Now it can fire three rounds in nine seconds or ten in fifty-six seconds and between ten and thirteen per minute continuously depending on barrel heating because as many um, people who use weapons and guns know when you start using a weapon continuously you start dealing with overheating. Um, and that can uh, warp or crack the barrel and lead to malfunctions and even explosions depending on the system and depending on how much overuse it's, it's having. Um, now, the PZH-2000 has been selected by the armies of Italy, Netherlands, and Greece, and more orders are probable as many NATO forces replace their M109 howitzers with the PCH 2000 and this is of German um, origin like I said and the M109 which I, I showed a little while ago is the uh, artillery they're ta that they're talking about um, replacing this uh, replacing with uh, replacing the howitzer with this beast here so like I said, it says it's the most powerful conventional artillery system currently de de deployed. And I imagine, you know, since it's currently deployed, this may be the most powerful ever. But if anyone is familiar with German um, World War II history, um, I think it's Big Bertha that, that Hitler wanted to put out there. And it was just like this enormous gun that was so big it was impractical because it took several, several, like an army of people to move it and insane amounts of time and labor. Um, and it looks like the Germans have kind of figured out the mix between mobility and firepower and that's what you end up with here. Something with an enormous gun, yet still mobile and war ready. So there we go. Thank you for enjoying this episode. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like. And I still have plans for more vehicle spotlights. And until next time, take care.